Good morning to everybody. Uh, my name is Patricia. Um, well, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for coming. It's a pleasure for me to be here one more time, and I really hope that you enjoy my presentation. So let's go. Well, first, um, I divided my presentation in two main parts. Uh, first, I'd like to give you a brief overview about tools in quality by design. And then I'm going to show you a case study where we are talking about the risk management for changing a leophilization process, right? So let's go. So, well, first of all, I, I'd like to give you a brief overview about this slide that I'm sure that some of you at least have seen before. So this is the application in a normal cycle for a pharmaceutical product. Starting from the process mapping, we are going to define our risk assessment in order to get uh, our design of experiments, so our design space. Therefore, we are going to define our control strategy. So we are going to see which part elements will be used for controlling the process and which statistical tools will follow for evaluating the efficacy of the performance. So then, we are going to desk-up and um, last but no least, uh, the regulatory step for compiling all the dossier in order to go in a future, in a closed future, hopefully, to the manufacturing industrial batches. Well, before going ahead with the case study, I'm going to uh, stop and give for a moment a regulatory perspective. So what says this slide? Imagine, please, a leophilization process, right? First, we have some inputs. We apply a process, and we obtain some output. So it's easy. It's the theory that all of us well known. But what happens in the real life? Well, we have variable inputs, not just inputs. That means that uh, maybe because of uh, the difference of the APIs, of batch by batch of the, the APIs or the raw materials, maybe the equipment is not perfect and can add some uh, variations during the process, but we apply a fixed process. So a fixed process is the consequence of the validation criteria, so with three consecutive industrial batches. But with that result, we have variable outputs. So maybe this cannot be satisfactory. We, we, are going, we expect to, to receive some um, fixed outputs. So let's go to the last proposal. We have in that case the variable inputs, but we apply an adjustable process in order to get the fixed output. That is exactly what we want. But well, the adjustable process uh, could be done in case that your machine can do self-regulation during the process. And maybe in this case, we can find a small design of a space in order to get our fixed outputs. But be aware of maybe in that case, uh, the process, the, the, the space that could give uh, this option could be really small. So let me show you the last proposal. Well, we have the variable inputs, and we want to apply a variable process in order to get some outputs. Well, the, validation, the variable process is totally on the contrary of the validation criteria. But if we have defined our risk assessment and our design space and all my outputs are inside the specifications, I don't mind that the variables, uh, that the inputs could be variable. So this is one to go to, to manage. So we are going to um, evaluate the group inputs and process and manage this variation. Well, we have here in this slide some spaces. The bigger one uh, is the knowledge space, who the most interested people that are involved are the researchers, that they want to know everywhere and everything. Then we have the specifications, who the most interested people are the health authorities. And we arrive, we arrive to the green zone, so the design space who is the company, the best important people who are interested in that point, because in that space, we always obtain the, the outputs inside the specifications. Well, in the red zone, we have uh, the, the, the option if we can control the process in a self-regulation part, because it's controlled by a mechanistic criteria. So in case of physically, 
could be perfect, but maybe not in business because this space is so really small. So let's go to manage my space in the green zone and establish the limits for do it. Well, here we have our sequence, our critical quality attributes that are obtained depending on what happens during the manufacturing process. So I mean, I have my, uh, my inputs, my critical material attributes, and my critical process parameters. I have to define how my go wrong during the process and establish my, the, the risk assessment. From that point, I want to apply my control strategy, which the bad elements that I'm going to use. And after the, they are not, after the batch, we are going to match all the results obtained during the process with my reference, with my sick ways, in order to know if the product is well just after, just before doing the analysis. Well, so coming back to the beginning, I have the quality target product profile from which one we will establish the, the critical quality attributes. On the other hand, I have my critical material attributes for the product, such as temperature of solidification, uh, temperature of collapse, and so on, from which one we are going to establish the manufacturing process, so our CPPs. In next step, we are going to link our CPPs with the CQA, so I, I'm going to be sure that with my C, from my CMAs and CPPs, we are going to uh, get my, stop, my, my expected CQAs. Therefore, I go to define the risk assessment in order to go to the design space. Well, at the end, this is the sequence. I'm sure that some of you reminds uh, this famous scheme about the risk management date on 2008, where, well, some people about, uh, told about the risk management, where the risk identification, analysis, and evaluation were done. That this is the first part. We first select the sequence for the purpose, CMAs, CPPs, and we link the CMAs with the CPPs. Then, after that, we have to determine the level of risk. In the second part, we are going to establish the mitigations for that risk, and we have to decide if we can accept the risk or just part of the risk. Then, in the last step, we have the risk review. So if we have my design space and I apply my control strategy, I can maintain my results batch by batch in constant revision. So after that, let's go to the case study. Well, starting from the prior, uh, prior knowledge about the process, so freezing, primary, and secondary drying, my aim is the manufactured solution and also the LEO process because the LEO process in the, uh, for doing the risk assessment is the most difficult part in the global uh, focus. The parameter of the process and the previous knowledge about the product. So here we have the key material attributes. From all of them, not all are critical, just some of them. One, two, three, and seven. This is the, techni the technique for evaluate the key material attributes, and the value obtained for our product. Finally, we have the historical data. During the last seven years, we have manufactured more than 400 batches, from which one, they are made in five different cycles and three different equipments. And the historical about the auto specifications and the batches placed in a stability. Well, here we have the link between the target and the sick way. So we are going to establish the specifications. In lyophilization, we always talk about uh, the um, humidity, the constitution time, the appearance. But it's also important to take into account the SI and impurities. So impurities is not depending uh, a lot on the, on the lyophilization process. Maybe it's, it's, may, uh, it's focused on the filling process, but if you have a cake, up, a cake pour, uh, a cake um, pour cake or a cook appearance, you have to take in mind that maybe there are something wrong in the lyophilization process. In case of the impurities, have more dependence on the Leo process because could be depend on the excess of heat, uh, too long time, and so on. So be aware on that point. 
Well, this is, these are the, the sequences for the product where we find the appearance, white or armored white, not collapsed uh, product. So we have a photo from the collapsed one and the right one. Reconstitution time less than three minutes. So reconstitution time is lower than one minute to ensure um, uh, that enables for easy use. In case of humidity, we have a specification in the product for 4%. And most of these kind of formulations have 6%. But our experience indicates that um, at release, humidity around 50-60% of the release ensures the, the maintenance of V during shelf life. Then we have uh, the specification for assay, 95, 105%, and last, the impurities that could be also be affected in case of the water content was so high. Okay? Then, here we have uh, the table uh, that shows the CPP process for each step, freezing, primary drying, and secondary drying, shelf uh, set points for the temperature and also the pressure. Be aware of, in case of the lyophilization process, all of them are critical because are the combination of all of them that ensures the exit of the success uh, of the Leo cycle. Well, here we can see uh, the link between the CMAs with the CPPs. So we can uh, see that in the product that the temperature of total solidifications affects related to the freezing step. Temperature of collapse and glass transition temperature affects to the primary drying. And the last critical one, the maximum allowed temperature affects to the secondary drying. Well. And, th and let's go to identify the, our risk. So this is a typical tool, it's no new, where we have identified some, um, how can go wrong during the process. So the possible failures during the process in each step. And we put a number in some of them because we are going to de be detailed in, in the next slide. So Gal, this is the, Another uh, typical tool for, for the identification that gives us more detailed information. For instance, let's go to the number one. Product is not ready for sublimation, melting, collapse, or even boiling can appear. The sequoia affected is the appearance or reconstitution time. CPP affected is temperature. And the possible cause, not enough temperature for freezing. Another one for primary drying step could be collapse, the uh, difficult reconstitution, particles, degradation substance, breakage of boil boredoms or a G wall for that case, sequoia affected appearance, reconstitution time, and impurities, CPP affected pressure and cause chamber pressure higher than the one corresponding to the temperature of collapse. Then we are going to determine the level of risk. So to do that, we use a rational, uh, and we are established which is the consequence of the occurrence and the probability or, or the possible to detect it. So we have uh, separate from severity to minor to critical. So no impact to the patient or high impact to the patient could be also reversible. Probability from very low to high. The difference is that maybe cannot occur or the, control, the, the equipment avoids the occurrence of the failure or we have control system based on path, we could have also control system without path, and the last one, if there are nothing, so no system control. And in case of detectability, from very high to known, depending on the probability to detect them. So here we have the risk priority number, where we have three different zones. The green zone uh, we consider as no risk, we have the orange zone as an acceptable risk, and the last one, red zone, as non-acceptable risk. Let's see, for instance, what happens with number this number 75. So we have severity moderate, so maybe could impact into the patient, but this could be reversible. And in case of probability, is low. So that means that during the cycle, we have a control system that controls the process, but based on path. So that means that at the end of the process, we could get all the results and match with my reference in order to know before doing the analysis if my results are OK. So if we go to the red zone, uh, you can see that there are a, a higher value uh, uh, about the risk. So 
we cannot, we, we cannot accept this part. We have to manage and do something because maybe the full batch goes no wrong and we take some samples for doing the analysis. These samples could be right and maybe we release the product and the product at the end is not well. So we have to avoid this and we have to manage. Then let's go to do the evaluation. So to do that, we put the, the, the different options. So for instance, number one, addition of soak at 10 degrees during one hour, Pos failure mode, no failure if possible in that case. The action increase the temperature among the bias. So there is no failure effect. My risk priority number is just one. Severity, the lower one, probability and detectability also. Well, let's see number four. In primary drying, change temperature uh, from set point zero to minus 15. What happens? In that case, no failure is possible also. But maybe be aware that the cycle could be so, so long, so therefore so, so expensive. So maybe there is no risk for the product, but be aware of that if you want, because uh, in case of business, if you want to keep your job, you have to pay attention on that point. So let's see one with the highest value, 350, what happens? Well, change of temperature set point from minus 50 to minus 40, failure mode, freezing incomplete, and failure effect, but drying no compliance with the specifications. So we'll have the punctuation, severity, the, the highest one, probability, and detectability with five. So the value is 350 at the end. We have to do something for manage it. Well, how can we do in that point? Well, as a mitigation actions, we can maintain the freezing temperature set point below that the total temperature fault solidification that we have determined by DSC before for my product. In that case, minus 27 degrees Celsius. So as a control system, we have the product temperature and the detection mode, temperature proof in bio, that in that case, we can consider it as a path element because in that stage, we can control the real temperature in the bio during all the stage. So well, we have reduced the, the, the risk from 350 to 10. The severity is, more, is, always a, um, is also the, the highest one, but we can reduce the probability of the occurrence. If we have performed all of them in all the cases, we part from this, uh, this scenario, okay? So we have some of our fa possible failures in the red zone. And after applying the mitigation, we are all of them involved in if without risk or as an acceptable risk. Well, here there are the QBD uh, approach. Uh, well, there are the different factors with two levels each one. The statistical analysis proposes to do 128 experiments, but a minimum with uh, of four nine and the sequence to follow. So take into account this nine. After do it, uh, we choose the number four for going to the engineering batch, to the industrial uh, scale. And the number four is one of the most extreme um, cycle for going ahead. This is the result in an industrial batch. So we can compare all the parameters uh, in each step from the current cycle and the proposed one. At the end, we can see that we have reduced in six hours the Leo cycle. That maybe is not enough, but be aware of if you don't work at night, or you don't have a, a, a night shift, you can reduce the cycle from three days to two days. So maybe it's an important topic because you can add some more batch during the week. Well, this is the results of the pilot batches where we can see that the aspects are right in all of them. Reconstit um, reconstitution time only um, also are inside the specifications and all of them less than one minute. Humidity content and impurities inside the specifications. And the results of the engineering batch. We have the graphic of, the, of the, all the, the steps that occur during the cycle. All the sequence complies also with the specification. Cycle has been reduced in six hours. And 
we applied a control strategy based on the process fingerprint established by chemometrics. So to conclude the exposition, uh, I could say that the risk associated with the equipment contain closer system and the characteristics of the product. Be aware of the, in case of the equipment and the container closer uh, system can be a reason of another risk assessment to include in that part of the LEO process, but can help to mitigate the risk. Process data obtained should be analyzed by multivariate statistics. The process parameters are always interrelated. Process outputs to be controlled should be chosen by a previous multivariate analysis. And on not all paths are available in the, in in, in the industrial parts, so maybe uh, only can be used in the pilot plant. And last, possible, it's possible to obtain a, an infinitive design of a space, but the risk should be assessed for the design a space that there are on the limits of acceptance. So, to conclude my presentation, please let me one more minute to present uh, who we are. Regiofre is a Spanish pharmaceutical company that it was founded in 1929. It's a family owned and has now more than 600 uh, people working. These are all our locations. One of them in Barcelona, where we can um, manufacture different type of products, such as sterils, freeze-dry products, and liquid products. Uh, liquid solutions, semi-solids and solids. We have also another facility in Toledo with two, with two different facilities, one for penicillinics and the other one for cephalosporanics in, in sterile vials. Our offices in Madrid with the commercial co uh, division and our international uh, business team. The, uh, and the last uh, one is the last one uh, in Reggio Frebioglan in the south of Sweden that they are specialized in the topical solution and, and semi-solid products. And the last one uh, with Archibel for our Reggio Fre biotech products. And to conclude, uh, Reggio Fre is one of the leading in the European market for a contract manufacturing. We work out last and see our dossiers that we have been developed in order to manufacture in the future. And we have the center of excellence in leophilization where we can develop and optimize the leo cycles from our own products and also for our clients. And the last one, the Regiofre Biotech Services, where for protein expressions, purifications, formulations, and manufacturing of preclinical and clinical batches, all of them in GMP environmental. And right now, yes, so thanks for your kind attention. <laughs>